Hi. So in the last video, I was talking about reacting versus mindfulness because every day we're constantly experiencing life. We get irritated, frustrated, pissed off, angry. We're happy. We're sad. We're giddy. We're giggly. All of those things and all of it's relevant. But those are all on the surface emotions. And the reason why I keep calling them that is because we don't have to be mindful to feel any of that. That happens regardless. And it happens because we're actually reacting to something that happened in our environment. So it's not something that we purposely went in and felt. It's not something that we purposely went in and looked at. It was something that happened, we reacted, we felt. This process, the flow of emotions, it's me in a moment. And when something happens, what am I going to choose to do? Am I going to choose to actually feel how I'm feeling in that moment, even if it's painful? Or am I going to reach for the crutch? We always reach for a crutch and we don't even realize it. Because what are we always avoiding? Pain. We always avoid and block things that don't feel good. So if anything has happened to you, any type of trauma or abuse or neglect, for example, all of how we feel about ourselves, the experiences, the moments, all of that growing up, we learn to block all of those things. Instead, we might have gone into depressive cycles, the empty space, I always talk about that. We might have anxiety, we might have OCD, we might go into super codependent cycles where we're constantly seeking people's approval or we are needing other people to try to give us our sense of self. We're being passive aggressive, anger. Anger is a big one. It's way easier to be angry than it is to be vulnerable or sad or in pain. So you start doing all these things constantly. Or you know what? I'm going to have a really good job. I'm going to be successful. I'm going to make a lot of money. I'm going to drive a nice car. I'm going to have a nice house. I'm going to constantly be doing things to prove that I matter and that I'm enough. So we're constantly doing. When are we ever being? I think the only time we can ever truly be is when we are in the flow of emotions, which is why I keep talking about this. And I'm experiencing this more and more and I'm understanding how to get into this state of being more and more and I got to tell you ever since I've been learning how to do this not only is it fulfilling but it's also I'm not as angry I can enjoy the the simple moments in life it's just it could be something so simple taking a walk and it's completely okay. And it's, I couldn't do that before. It just, I always needed something intense. I always needed to go out in situations that, you know, made me feel alive because I always felt so disconnected. So I was constantly doing things that were super impulsive and just really giving me some a huge, intense sensation of some sort. So I was talking about that. And I don't need to do any of that anymore. And if I see myself starting to do that, it's because I know that I'm feeling numb, which means what? Something probably happened. I'm actually in pain and I'm blocking it. We block pain. We avoid pain by nature. So when I say we go numb, we disconnect, we detach, we go into dysfunctional patterns, toxic cycles, all of that. When we start understanding that that's our crutch, we can then start understanding when we're actually blocking how we're feeling in a moment. Because if I'm reaching for a crutch, that means I'm also blocking a feeling. So in this process, part of the mindfulness is, okay, I'm reaching for this crutch. Let me stop myself. Let me sit here and just take some deep breaths what is happening right now? Did I just get triggered? What are the thoughts that are going through my head? Am I upset? Anger is a secondary emotion. Go further. What am I feeling right now? And go into that. 
And the more you start to do that more and more, the more you will start getting into the actual feelings of whatever it is. It takes a lot of practice. So this isn't going to happen overnight. And so with the romantic relationships that I said I wanted to get into, and I know I started going off on uh, my twin flame journey. I don't know if anybody can even relate to that, but it's something for me that's a path that I'm on in particular. And it's been beautiful. It's been something that has completely changed my life. It's it's a form of consciousness that's really helped me connect back to how I'm love and that no matter what, I, I am love and I do deserve to be here. It's because I know how to feel my feelings now. I don't think everybody's on a twin flame journey. I think that we actually all are meant to be with certain people at certain times throughout our life. I think some people come in for a brief period to teach us something. I think some people come in for longer periods to teach us something. I think sometimes we get with somebody and it may not be the healthiest relationship, but we stay and that was kind of what was meant to be in that lifetime. So I think whatever's kind of meant for us will be for us. I also believe that we like energy attracts like energy. I was saying that. But we're going to date people based on how we feel about ourselves. So the reason why I say that there's usually a lesson involved is because I believe the universe brings us certain people. The universe already knows what we're going to do. We've already chosen our path. We're just, we're walking it. And I know that's confusing to some people because then they're like, well, so I can just kind of do whatever I want. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen anyway. Whatever you choices you are going to continue to make, that's what's going to continue to be your path. The universe is just there, constantly connected to you, and you're constantly connected to it. So it's already happening. You're creating your reality. We are co-creators, I believe, with the universe. And so it's whatever you want for your life. Not everybody is going to understand this process. When I start talking about emotions... Some people will never even hear that or even understand what it is that I mean when I talk about the flow of the emotional self and being in my present moment because they don't care. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to do it. And that's valid. That's fine. We all have our own journeys. So this one, very spiritual because I'm constantly connected to the universe. I'm constantly hearing the universe talking with me, communicating and I'm always trying to develop my intuition so that I can continue to trust myself and how I'm feeling because how I'm feeling will, that's what kind of leads me into better situations because the better I start to feel about myself, the more I learn to trust myself, the better decisions I'm going to continue to make for myself. Once we continue to want better for ourselves, then our soul, we're not going to be satisfied in certain situations anymore. We're just, we're going to be wanting better. And that's a good thing. But relationships in particular always reflect how we're actually feeling about ourselves as far as I'm concerned. Because the dynamics that we get into, not only is it going to be something that we were probably raised in, it's a familiar pattern that we saw mom or dad do or whoever our parent or guardian was, whoever raised us, it's gonna be similar. But it's not only their actual patterns that we pick up on, it's also how they felt about themselves. And technically when we're kids, when we're brought into this world, we don't know anything. We don't know why we're here. All I know is that I'm crying and I'm hungry and I need somebody to feed me. And all of a sudden now I'm completely completely reliant on everybody else outside of me to help me to do everything for me ultimately give me my sense of me in that moment so really even from birth we don't have we're not building our own foundation somebody else is building it for us which is why I think even if we had a pretty good childhood we still as adults if we want to go to the next level need to understand within our soul selves, how am I love and how do I matter and continue to connect to that by again getting into the flow of emotions. 
by again going deeper into whatever we can and really continuing to look within our selves more and more in each situation and the universe will continue to bring situations that you can connect with and that you can become more conscious of you have to want it though if you don't want it you're not going to see it if you're in a relationship and just trying to teach you a lesson and you don't want to see the lesson you're not going to you're just going to continue the cycle and continue going round and round and round and that's always our choice so technically from birth we didn't the original foundation was that we were reliant on somebody else technically forming codependency from start and then we absorbed whoever was around whatever their patterns were but we also absorbed how they believed that they were loved so let's just say that i have an addict parent so they're constantly zoned out not only are they ignoring me so that's going to cause other problems for me when am i ever receiving love from them i'm not i'm always receiving what fear i'm always receiving this void space of i'm not good enough because you know what? if i'm doing drugs or drinking every single day i don't feel good about myself i don't if i'm constantly wanting to avoid reality and disconnect from everything and everyone including myself that means I'm running. That means I'm running from me. I'm running from something that I don't want to look at. That implies that there's something there that I don't like, which implies that I don't like me. How am I loved? So now as a kid, and I'm experiencing that from one of my parents, I'm not receiving love. I'm not receiving what I'm receiving is the void space. What I'm receiving is codependency. What I'm receiving is lack. This person doesn't like who they are. Wait a second. All, all I'm getting, the only energy I'm getting right now is sadness, disconnect. So we need to understand our foundation, which is why I always encourage you to do the inner child work because that's relevant to who we are now. But Again, even if you had a good upbringing, I still think the human experience in general, it tells us that we're good because we do good things or we're good because we perform well, because we have money, we have a nice car, we have a nice house, we're in this ha quote unquote happy marriage, you know, all these things that we have to do to suddenly be okay. And that's not us being, that's different. Us being is not doing anything except feeling in a moment. And that sounds so simple, but it's not. To sit and actually be in your present self is one of the hardest things to me that we'll ever have to do. Giving up the crutch. Hard. So hard to realize all the things I've done my whole life to avoid me. All of these things are so difficult. But actually sitting and feeling the feelings, that one's hard. So I want to talk about, well, I want to talk about something from my past. But first of all, I had a dream the other night. I said this before, pay attention to your dreams because the universe might be communicating to you through your dreams. I believe in that. I've always had the most vivid dreams. But sometimes it's something very specific that I know there's a message in there for me. So the other night it was... This guy that I used to, I wouldn't even say date because we never even really dated. We just hooked up a few times. But I was so obsessed with him because what I started to say in the last video is that one of my crutches is that I was always obsessed with some guy. Always. The reason why, and again, it, this is something that I really really had to learn about myself. I really had to accept this about myself because when I was doing it, I didn't realize why I was doing it, even though it seems so obvious to me now. But so my whole life, I was always focused, super focused on someone. And not that we were dating necessarily. It was that I, I wanted them so much and I wanted them to like me and to acknowledge me so much that that became my complete focus in life. It didn't matter 
if we even ever talked, whatever, it didn't matter. I became super focused, obsessed with this person. Whether I fantasize about him or, you know, whatever I did, it was nothing else really mattered. I, like, this is where I need all my attention and all my energy to go. Why do you think I did that? So every time I did that, what did that help me avoid? That helped me avoid me. Because if I want to obsess over somebody else and I want to think that somebody else is great or I want somebody to then look at me and want to be with me and think that I'm great, what do you think I'm really wanting? Really what I was needing was somebody to tell me that I was lovable. But nobody can tell me that and make me believe it. That's something that I need to go within and really believe for myself. That's the void that we need to fill within ourselves. You guys may not have an issue with this, but I'm saying this was something that I struggled with. And so one of the guys that I used to be obsessed with, and I would say for a very, very long time, it took, it was really hard to get through this one. And I know it was because I, I literally put all myself into these obsessions. So if they didn't like me back or if it didn't go well, I was nothing. But somehow hanging on to it and chasing them and continuing to pursue them in some way, even if it was just texting them, it still made me feel like I existed. It still made me feel like I mattered in some way, especially if they texted me back. Because it's like, okay, I'm still here. I have meaning. Okay. Then the next day, same thing, same fears, same anxiety. So I would usually try to text them because I wanted a response. Because as soon as I got a response, all of a sudden I felt this sense of relief. Like, okay, cool. Like, I do matter. I'm so important. Okay, okay. They can see me. I'm somebody to see. So what does that mean? That I'm somebody that has value. So I kept doing that over and over and over and over and over again. That was one of the most toxic cycles I was ever involved in. And I just got through it like in the past few years. It's something I finally worked through it because why? I started feeling my feelings. So every time I wanted to obsess over somebody, it's, ah, what are you avoiding right now? No, 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 you're losing yourself. What are you losing right now? It's like, well, I'm, I'm invisible. If somebody doesn't see me, I'm invisible. If somebody doesn't text me back or want to be with me, that's it's because I'm disgusting. So I need them to want me. I need them to like me. I need to believe that they like me because if not, then I don't know how I'm likable, which really means what? How am I loved? I was doing this constantly. So with this particular person, so in the dream, it was, I remember I saw him walking on the sidewalk and it was funny because it was in my old neighborhood. Pay attention to details like that. It was where I used to live when I was a kid and he was walking towards the school that I used to go to. And so I drove up and I was like, hey, do you need a ride? He was like, yeah. And all of a sudden, I give him a ride. And somehow we end up at somebody's house. I don't know whose it was, but all of a sudden, my family was there. And then all of a sudden, my mom was there. And she was cooking dinner or something. And then, you know, me and him walk in. And my mom was like, hey, do you want some food? Talking to the guy. And he was like, yeah, sure, I'll take it. She's like, okay. Do you want some dessert? He's like, yeah, I'll take it. So he just kept taking all of these things that we kept offering him. Do you want a ride? Do you need this? Do you want this? And he just kept taking, 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 taking. And in the dream, I remember actually feeling, feeling depleted. Like I was giving and giving and giving and not getting anything back. I was like, yeah. That's what I used to do constantly, constantly. It was me chasing. I wasn't really giving them 
anything though when i think about it it was i was giving them my fear and the reason why i say that is because if i didn't feel good about myself and i didn't believe that i was loved i wasn't giving them love i wasn't even giving them me or a sense of me what i was giving them was how i was scared and how i didn't believe that i was worthy of anything and so i was giving them my void space here here you go, here's my empty space, you fill it up. Just like my parents did to me when I was younger. Here's my empty space, Rebecca, you fill it up. I was like, wait a second, I need, I need you to give me a foundation of love. I, I can't fill your void, I don't even know what that means. And that's not my job. So in the dream, it was really weird. It was, it reminded me of what I used to do, but it hurt. Like it was physically painful. I remember I woke up and I wasn't crying, but I wanted to cry a little bit. It was just like, it was very painful. I felt it. I felt being used, what that feels like when somebody's using you. And not to say that this guy did, but in the dream, it was just all he was doing was taking and from everybody. And I was just watching and I couldn't do anything about it. It was so weird. It was just like, oh my gosh, I, this is what I used to do. And, you know, I'm still not 100% sure why I had that dream or if it was just to show me this is how much progress you've made. But it was a little, I, it just felt weird. I was like, what are you showing me? I've been getting triggered a lot lately too. So I think the universe is just doing what it always does and it's trying to, get me to the next level is trying to help me understand different things about me and the more we go in and continue to feel our feelings and understand when we're not feeling good about ourselves that all always helps us come back to our present moment so that we can then feel good about who we are by what feeling our feelings getting into our present state of being and just allowing that moment within us and connecting and in that connection it's love it's our authentic truth i really do believe that that's when i feel the most connected to everything no that's not going to happen every second of every day but it happens often and when it does it's beautiful and i'm not as stressed out or overly worried about things anymore because i know how to bring all of that back into how do you feel because when we're anxious, stressed out, overthinking, it's usually because we're feeling some kind of a way. How are you feeling? What's the fear? I always tell you guys to ask yourself that. Bring it back into the feeling state of me, state of being. We need the logic. We need to make decisions. We need to understand things. But we also need to just feel and let go. And that's hard. So the guys I used to be obsessed with, it was, it was painful because not only was I never, did I ever receive any type of fulfillment, they weren't even fulfilled within themselves because again, like energy attracts like energy. They were empty within themselves also, disconnected in some way, fear of intimacy, whatever it was for them. And I was drawn to that because, hey, I, I'll, I'll try to fill your void space if you fill mine. And that's not the way it works. When I was chasing them, it also made me feel very in control because I don't really have to like you or give you the real me if I'm constantly chasing you. Because if I'm constantly chasing you, do you ever see me? No. Why? Because you're running. Technically, you're not looking at me. So technically, that's good for me because I don't want you to look at me. Why? Because I haven't even looked at me yet and I haven't even accepted how I believe that I'm loved with all of these things that have happened to me, for example. I don't want them to see that I think that I'm defective because I don't want them to see me as defective. And that's one of my biggest fears. Do people see me as gross? Do people look at me and do they think, oh, she's disgusting? Oh, who would want that? 
Oh, all these things have happened to her. Oh, no, she's damaged goods. That's one of my fears. If I think other people are thinking that about me, what do you think is really happening? How do you think I'm feeling about myself? I think it's because I actually still believe that sometimes. I still believe that I'm damaged or gross, and that doesn't feel good. So I sit there and start thinking about that and giving in to the false belief. It doesn't feel good. And a lot of times, instead of actually feeling it, it's just I'm overthinking it. And I might start playing the victim role. Well, yeah, well, all these things happen. So maybe I just am damaged. Maybe I don't deserve to be seen. It's like, no, no. How do you feel? And then I bring myself back into the flow of emotions. And how does that actually feel? What does feeling gross actually feel like? It's very painful. It's very painful to do this. And again, if you don't understand what I mean when I say feel, what it feels like to feel defective or gross or invisible, that's okay. That's something that at a moment you'll release it and you will feel it. You have to do it though. It's not going to happen a lot at first. It might be for just a few seconds, realistically. But you know what? A few seconds, you are in your present self. You are in your present moment. That's progress. That's always a good thing. But these situations and people that are brought into our lives, they're here to allow us the opportunity to get back into our present moment as often as possible. So who we're attracted to it's going to show us how we're feeling about who we are always, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. I always encourage you to look at that. A lot of times we will stay in very unhealthy, dysfunctional relationships. Why? Because we think that that's what we deserve. A lot of times it's because we haven't built our own foundation of who we are and how we're loved. So we want somebody else to do it for us. Here, you somehow help me believe that I'm loved. We don't think that that's what we're doing. But when we're getting with somebody that we're not really connecting with, or we get with somebody and we end up being in some kind of a stuck cycle, for example, and we're both just kind of going round and round, doing the same exact thing every single day, we're not really growing or connecting on a deeper level, why? because we're not doing that within ourselves. And that starts to feel very stagnant after a while, especially if you're an old soul. If you're an old soul, your, your soul is screaming at you, stop. Like I need depth, I need connection, I need a deeper sense of fulfillment. This is not working for me. There's nothing wrong with us or the people we're with. It's just, if I can't connect with myself on a deep level, I'm not going to be able to connect with somebody else on a deep level. If I want more, then I need to be able to give myself more. So it's always, who do we date? What are some of the patterns that you start to notice? And a lot of times we are, I don't want to say we're giving, we're giving, but we're not giving ourselves. We're giving things or we're making other people responsible for filling our void and not even realizing it which is why I talk about codependency all the time you somehow make me believe that I'm love you somehow you make me believe that I matter and that could look like me being like a very clingy needy person and here I am latching on to you and doing everything I can for you because I just, I want to make sure that you see me and that you value me. And I want to make sure that I do everything, I, everything possible so that you're happy. Why am I doing that? Because I'm hoping that you will see that and then in turn see me. And when I say see me, I'm hoping that you will then believe that I'm love because what does that mean again if you believe that I'm love 
then somehow I can believe it. And so we continue to get into that cycle over and over and over again and not even realize it where we're actually wanting the reaction from people and not really connecting at love consciousness. We're not really connecting at a level of love when we're reacting. What we're doing is we are connecting at the void space. Here's my void react to it so in a positive way so that I can feel positively about myself somehow. And that's not anybody's job, but we sure do make it other people's jobs all the time. If you want to recognize that, most of us don't. We'll just kind of continue on and think, you know what, this is okay. I'm just going to keep dealing with it. Or no, I don't do things like that. We won't hold ourselves accountable for it. We have to hold ourselves accountable for what we're doing and how we're feeling. We're the only ones that can feel our feelings. Another example I always like to use is the avoidant. Because here's the needy, clingy person that's sitting here doing everything they can for this other person. Because really they're handing them their void space. Here, here's my void space. What does that mean? It means I'm not feeling good about myself. This is where I feel disconnected and this is where I don't believe that I'm loved. This is my fear. Here you go. Take my fear and you turn it into love. So then we have, let's say, the avoidant who's shutting down constantly emotions not nah, not doing that i mean technically we're all avoiding our emotions when we're not feeling them when we're blocking them but an avoidant will actually stop talking to people for long periods of time when they're uncomfortable they will not call you back until they feel like it i'm not gonna text you back until i feel like it i need to be in control of that why because I don't want to look at my stuff either. And not only that, but I actually like this clingy person clinging on to me. Or I like it when people chase me because then that gives me a sense of self that helps me feel love. So here's my void space. And now I'm giving it to this person. Here, can you cling on to me so that I actually believe that I'm love? I mean, we do all these things and we... It's really hard to see it sometimes because we don't want to see ourselves as not valuing who we are. It's hard to look at that. It really is. So not only was I, did I have the obsessions with these guys. Also, I'm dating addicts and alcoholics, which you know, is not a big shocker to me there either. Now when I'm dating them... Really, it's, can you please stop doing drugs? Well, if you didn't drink so much, maybe we could hang out and maybe you wouldn't be so mean. Or, you know, maybe if you weren't always drunk, you would pay more attention to me and you'd want to be around me. So can you please stop doing these things so that somehow I can feel more purposeful in life? Because if you stop doing drugs and stop drinking, then I'll really, really believe that you love me and then I'll really believe that that I matter so see it's like when people love us all of a sudden we mean something and the truth is we mean something because we are love I'm not saying that we can't love people but I think when we love people it's more it's that we are our complete selves to allow people to receive meaning if I actually feel good about who I am and I know how to fill in my own void space and I'm not lacking and I know how to be strong for me and I know how to feel fulfilled when I'm around you you're automatically going to receive that energy because it's an energy within us it's not literal I don't literally carry around a void space, but energetically I do. And energetically, we can feel that from people. Whether you've tapped into being able to, to do that or not, is you know, it's whether you have or not, but you can. It's possible. That's why when you're around some people and they just it's almost like you can feel how sad they are and how 
and low vibe they're feeling in that moment. We can feel that. I'm sure you have. It's like we can pick up on when people aren't feeling good about who they are. We don't always understand what it means, but we sure we can feel something. It feels disconnected somehow because we're picking up on their void space. And we all have it, even just a little bit. It's constantly up to us to continue to go in and fill in that void space with how we're love, love consciousness. I am love. I'm here. I'm feeling. I'm feeling because I matter. I matter because I exist and I demonstrate that I'm loved by feeling because I am what I feel. So we continue to feel, we continue to fill in that void space in a healthy way. And it's ours, we're doing it. When we try to get other people to do it, it actually makes the void space bigger because they're not doing it. We're just running after them more, hoping that they will. So it makes it bigger. It doesn't fill it in. So when I'm sitting here and, you know, we're trying to get other people to, again, give us our foundation and trying to make us feel good about who we are. When are we receiving? What are we receiving? So again, when I'm feeling good about me and I'm fulfilled and I'm in a really good place, that's going to feel good energetically. You're going to be around me and it's you're not going to feel like I'm sucking the life out of you because I'm not, because I'm actually bringing life to the situation because I brought life to myself because I did that. I'm able to do that within me. And you get to experience that when you're around me. That's a really nice feeling. So when I talk about receiving or giving, it's not even that we necessarily give people us. I don't give you myself. It's I am myself. I am me. I am my present moment. And so the dynamic is going to be more fulfilling when we're both in our present moment. Otherwise, it's somebody's trying to take technically because now if I'm in my present self and I'm feeling fulfilled and looking at myself on a deeper level and connecting at a deeper level and then I come around you and you're actually handing me your void space, you're being passive aggressive or you're not being, you're not being straightforward with me, you're kind of making comments like you need me to do something for you so that suddenly you can feel okay or whatever it is. Now all of a sudden I'm feeling this, this obligation to do something for you to make you happy. And that doesn't feel good. It's like, no, no, like don't demand me to make you feel better about yourself. That's not my job. But energetically, that might be what I start to feel. And when I'm in a good place within myself, I don't want to be around that kind of energy, whether it's romantic or not, but definitely not in a romantic partnership. But when we still have a big gap of disconnect and we do want other people to fill our void, we, we're going to be with somebody else that also wants us to fill their void. Like energy attracts like energy. So it doesn't feel good to be around somebody that's energetically demanding that you fill them up. It does not feel good. So when we're with certain people, we, we may not understand it, but let's say, for example, I'm in a relationship and I see this a lot. I'm staying with somebody. I've done this. <laughs> I'm staying with somebody and I'm miserable. I hate the relationship. This person just irritates me and I'm like, why am I with you? But I, I continue to choose to stay. Why? Because I'm trying to change them or maybe they'll get better or, oh, whatever. You know, they just irritate me, but I just, I, I can't leave. I just, I would rather complain and be upset and angry and stay angry every single day and complain about the situation every single day I've been there. How do you think we're feeling about ourselves when we're doing that? 
uh, you know, we don't feel good about ourselves. But it's not only that. It's a lot of times we have a hard time leaving relationships because we are basing our self-worth and our sense of who we are, how I'm loved, on this person, on this dynamic. So if somehow it doesn't work out or if I leave, who am I? Even though I'm miserable, I still have a sense of self in some way, meaning I still feel wanted on some level because this person is staying with me. And even though it's completely dysfunctional, somehow it works. So some, somehow on some level, I, I feel, kind of feel like I matter. But I feel like I matter because I keep handing this person my void space. And this person, since they also don't feel good about who they are, because they're staying in a miserable relationship, we're both at the same level energetically. So they're also handing me their void space, technically. So we hand somebody our void space. What are we also doing? We're giving them our whole identity, our whole sense of being. Here you go. You take it and you do something with it. You're responsible for it now. And that, to me, that honestly, I think that makes us feel safe. That helps us feel loved. That just gives us some sense of comfort and some sense of purpose. Because, well, here, this person took my void space, so they must, so I must be loved. Well, this person you know, is taking my void space, so I must be meaningful, right? And never are we receiving, going back to the receiving. I don't even think we understand what that feels like until we start doing that within ourselves. We can't receive from other people until we can go within and do that for ourselves. So we start feeling our feelings and we're really getting, getting into the flow of emotions. I'm receiving that. I'm giving myself my own void space. Myself is taking that void space and saying, okay, Rebecca, let me have that because you know what? I'm going to breathe through this moment, feel my feelings, and I'm going to continue to fill this void space with love because you are love. I am love because I'm feeling this moment and I am exactly what I'm feeling and I am my present self. This is my authentic truth. I'm filling my own void space. And now I'm learning how to feel purposeful in this void space. I'm learning how to give up the crutch and still believing that I matter. I'm learning how to feel these horrific, painful emotions and still believe that I matter. I'm learning how to tear down the walls that I've built for so many years because I was trying to self-protect. I'm learning how to tear all of it down and still believe that I matter. But until we consciously, consciously, purposely, mindfully continue to do this every day, constantly, we're going to make other people responsible for it. That's why this process is so hard. It's so much easier to just stay in a codependent cycle, for example. Here, you, you approve of me. You make me feel okay. Here's my void space. Thank you. I hate you and I'm angry and you piss me off and you irritate me and I don't even like being around you most of the time. But you have my void space. I feel safe and comfortable. And um, if I leave, I don't know who I am. So I'm just going to stay. Because I would rather stay than leave and not know who I am and actually have to feel who I am. Because who am I? Yes, I'm love. But to get to that point, what do we have to start feeling? We have to start feeling invisible. We have to start feeling defective. We have to start feeling gross. We have to start feeling like we don't matter. We have to start feeling like we're not good enough. Who wants to do that? It's so painful. I'd rather hand you my void space and just deal with this toxic shit of a relationship 
block out my emotions and just stay angry and just blame you for everything and stay on the surface. It's a lot easier to do that. And we think that feeling the shame is more painful. Well, actually it is more painful, but we are more scared to do that than we are to stay in this unhealthy relationship for years and years. I mean, some people will just stay in the same toxic relationship forever. It's always, again, a reflection of how we're feeling about ourselves. If I don't feel good about me, if I don't feel good about me because I feel good about me, because I'm doing this process, because I am love, if I don't know how to do that, then I'm going to stay with somebody else who feels the same way. So I, I just want you guys to think about all these things, the void space, receiving. If, are you receiving the void space or are you receiving love? You can only receive love from people, if that's what we want to call it, when they are loving who they are. Meaning if I'm around you and you're handing me your void space, you can tell me you love me all day. I'm not receiving that. I'm still receiving your gap of disconnect, whether it's that you're angry, you're lashing out at me, you are trying to blame me for everything and somehow I'm responsible for all these things because you don't want to feel. And then I do it back to you because I'm feeling the same way about myself, right? I don't have a sense of self, so you fill my void. So I just want you guys to think about that. Do you want to receive a void space from somebody or do you want to receive unconditional love? When I love myself and I'm in, I fill my own void, you don't fill it. You receive just me and that I'm love. And so you're receiving love technically in that moment. That's the greatest feeling. And I think we get into these relationships. You know, again, everybody, we're going to be at different relationships at different points in our lives. We're learning different lessons. People are here to teach us different things. Um, we're going to continue to grow and we're going to want differently for ourselves. But then we come to a point where, you know what, I know how to feel my feelings. And I know how to fill my own void. I know how to be my present, authentic self. I want somebody else who's also doing that and to me that's the ultimate form of a relationship when you're both at that level and a lot of that for me is the twin flame dynamic when you're really mindfully going in and creating this unconditional love within you're not going to want to be with somebody that's going to hand you a void space you won't you will not accept that you will only accept somebody that's going to come in and be unconditional love and to me, that's the highest level of us valuing who we are. But to me, that's the highest level that we can go to as far as being love. You know, I'm always, I'm always love. You're always love, no matter what. But it's, we need to believe it. And I need to connect to it. And I can go deeper and deeper, but there comes a point where I really believe it truthfully. And then I'm going to want that from somebody else, with somebody else, to experience that with somebody else. So I just want you to think about all these things. The void space, where are you at? How do you feel? Continue to ask yourself that. Let's continue practicing feeling in a moment, flow of emotions.